it's Mitchell Gad here, and if I'm not on ATR, I'm listening to ATR, so have a think about that. Intro time, what number are we? Oh, um, 97. Is it 97? Mm. 97, we are here with Victoria. Where are we? We are at the Museum of Cardiff. We're going to talk Cardiff, uh, the history of the city, we're going to talk about how that relates to football, you know, the, the importance of football, the importance of football, a bit of home as well, as well that's going on as we record. Um, it's going to be a good one this week. If you like Cardiff, let's do play music. <laughs> quite a new kid on the block and mm. certainly quite a baby in museum terms. Yeah. So we actually only opened in 2011 mm -hmm. and before that Cardiff had never had its own museum that told its own story. Within that they recommended that um, Cardiff needed to really shout about its heritage because it's got such a great history it's rich, yeah. and it's you know, actually really hidden. Building of the Glorganshire Canal which originally was about shipping iron down from Nook Mercer and yeah. out because um, it's the Glamorganshire Canal and then later the docks that set Cardiff on this literal kind of, you know, explosion yeah. in terms of, you know, the industry that was here, but in terms of the people that were literally being sucked in from mm. all over, you know, first the world, UK, yes. but then, then the world. Cardiff has gone for, at the beginning of the 19th century, a population of under 2,000, mm. you know, around about 100 years later, it's got a population of around about 200,000. The first dock, um, purpose-built dock, um, rather than sort of key, um, mm. absolute, you know, proper dock that the market of view sort of um, financed, that opened in 1839. And I think it's that that mm. then just starts this. So you've got, you know, a, a population explosion, you know, because there's work here. And that's one of the reasons, actually, that you don't see a Welsh diaspora across mm. the world so much as you do, say, the Irish or, or even Scottish yeah. diaspora, because there was so much work in, in wow. Wales that people would come, you know, from North Wales, would come down to Cardiff. And Cardiff made a lot of money on the backs of the, the South Wales um, coal miners mm. and yeah. the valleys. But the money that was being um, made down in, down in the docks yeah. um, for the, you know, the great and the good, if you like, um, that does create this this real um, confidence, which creates this real ambition. Welcome to our land of dragons. We talk a bit of Cardiff City. Yeah. Can we do that. Talk a bit about Cardiff and sport and football and all the things that and how they've impacted. <laughs> <laughs> How did Cardiff City impact? If you don't know why I'm laughing, watch the video on our YouTube channel, sorry. Right. <laughs> How? Okay, so, um, as I was saying in the, the last segment, um, so in that sort of early, um, mid to late 19th century, um, you've got people coming to Cardiff from firstly all over uh, the UK and then the world because there's so much work here. Yeah. So we go from a population of under 2,000 to a population of 200,000 in a very short space of time. Um, so I've read articles and, and um, references to Cardiff at that time and, and described it as a frontier town. Yeah. You've got so many people coming and, and, and living here. They shared nothing else other than they randomly ended up here because there's work here. Wow. So um, the so, kind so of... So sport the, impacts that and brings the well, community the, to the, the, the great and the good are a little bit worried about this Trying to put down roots, trying to, to you know, feel more belonging, mm -hmm. um, and some of the way that they do that is either by bringing the sport that it means something to them, mm -hmm. or they play sport within those existing communities. So, for example, one of the first um, groups of, of, of people to sort of really come and live and work here are migrants from the West Country. Mm -hmm. So, the first sport that you see really taking a hold of it. 
then the next sort of, um, uh, sort of um, mi migration, I guess, is, is a UK-wide migration. So you get people from North Wales, from the Midlands, from the South East, um, and they bring their love on football. So it's at that point that then you see football kind of being... What year was that generally? What decade was that brought in? Um, so it's, it's so you've got um, teams being brought together to um, as, a, as a way to create a sense of belonging, a sense of, of, of the Cardiff identity, actually, yeah. if you like, because you're, you're sharing something other than just how you live here, yeah. you know, with, with people from, from all over the world. Cardiff City have actually got cricketers from Riverside to thank for their team, because it was Barney Wilson, um, the head of the mascot, um, Bartley Wilson wanted to keep uh, the players of Riverside uh, Cricket Club active and fit during the winter period. So he created um, or established Riverside AFC to do that. Um, in, I think it was 19... Um, so, so he established them in, in 1899. Uh, um, 1905, Cardiff becomes a city. So he asked, or, or the, the, you know, Riverside AFC asked, can they change their name to Cardiff City? And they're told, no, they're not high enough in the, in the league for, for that. It's a, it's um, change. <laughs> <laughs> um, they were finally allowed to do that in uh, 1908, yeah. but on the proviso that if a professional team was ever established, they'd give up the name. So yeah. in 1910, they turned professional themselves. And Sport is, is very much used um, as, as a way to create a Cardiff identity, a Cardiff community, um, to help people put down roots, to feel part of this new, you know, town, yeah, town and city. Um, but it was also, I think, instrumental in Cardiff becoming a capital city as well. So, um, you know, I've talked a bit about the, you know, the, the, the great and the good of Cardiff mm -hmm. having that vision. Mm -hmm. Um, in, the, in the late 19th century, so building the building that would be needed to sort of say, you know, we, we are legit a, a capital city. Um, but also the, the fact that Cardiff was hosting um, international sporting events, so Union Park was hosting yeah. international football matches from yeah. uh, 1911, I think. Um, so the fact that it's regularly a kind of a, a host for international mm -hmm. matches already. Let's move on, but let's stay with the theme in the next section. <laughs> move on, then. <laughs>
medals. Wow. Where did he... Fred was actually injured in the Battle of the Somme and yeah. so badly injured that he thought he wasn't going to play again. Wow. And then, like, ten years later, he's Wednesday. at Wembley winning the, the FA Cup. That's incredible. Yeah. That is heavy. So <laughs> Trixie the cat, you can see with Fred there. Trixie... Yeah, Trixie. I'm going to this way. Yeah. Trixie. Trixie followed them. They were in South and they were training on the links in Southport and mm. ready for one cup tie game yeah. and Trixie's kind of just following them around mm. so they persuade her owners to let um, them <laughs> have her and then she That's becomes amazing. this real kind of you know black cat lucky mascot so they have to take her to every single match including the final wow. she lives at Ninian Park she, I think she survived until the late 1930s but yeah Trixie became the Cardiff City <laughs> cat so I think it's about 40,000 um, City fans hmm. make their way to London that day for the, for the final. Um, and obviously you can see some of them there actually, um, on the top left. Yeah. Um, one of the key ways to, to, to show that they're supporting City is obviously to wear a leak. The uh, vendors at, at Covent Garden tripled their prices wow. that day. And one of my favourite little facts yeah. is that we might have that cup final for the term back to square one. Wow. So the cup final was the first final broadcast live yeah. on the wireless. <laughs> Um, and to help um, listeners, you know, understand what the commentators were saying, the Radio Times printed this um, grid on, on Wembley. So it's that so phrase. It's, it's kind of, yeah, it was like split up into ne numbered grids or squares so that the commentators could tell listeners where the action was. So back to square one meant that there must have been quite a lot of, you know, going back to wow. you know, the ball back going back to, to the square one. That is blow my mind. <laughs>
Listen, I've learned thing. a lot. I've learned an awful lot. What's um, your favourite thing, Vince? This ship. It's been incredible. Like, I now just want to learn more about my city. I literally was having this conversation last night when I was watching a London travel guide on YouTube. I was like, there's an no for Cardi. There is, and it's here. It's right not there. shit, it's Terra Nova. It's important. Well, I like it. <laughs> <laughs> felt huge.